How's it going everybody? My name's Eric and in this video we are going to be talking about the printer game. As you've seen in a lot of my previous recent videos, I've been on a 2x7 thermal label printing kick, really showing this lesser known format of printing. And while I'm on that topic, I want to decipher some of the craziness that Dymo has to offer because they have a handful of products and if you just go on Amazon or you go on their website, you don't really know which one to buy depending on your application. And the way that they advertise or differentiate them as a marketing standpoint isn't very clear to the consumer. They don't talk about platform integrations. They don't talk about label postage compatibilities. And you're just seeing pictures on the website of printers and you really can't tell size differences either. And that's where I'm coming in with this video. Try to clear the fog of all of the confusion, at least for the applications that we're going to be talking about. So in this video, we're going to go over the similarities of the printer, things that they all have in common. We're gonna talk about the differences. We're gonna talk about the price points and the availability because some of these printers we're going to talk about aren't even available brand new anymore. If you were going to buy them, it would be secondhand. What we're mainly going to be talking about is is the Dymo 4XL versus the other ones. The Dymo 400, the 400 Turbo, the 450, and the 450 Turbo. Here's the printers. The Dymo 4XL, specifically for this video, I have the Label Writer 400, but as you will learn, the 400 is very similar, if not 99.5% similar to the 400 Turbo which is 99.5% similar to the 450, which is 99.5% similar to the 450 Turbo. And for the ease of this video, we're just going to say that they're the same printer other than speeds, because that's pretty much what it boils down to. I'm just going to call them the 400 series printers and I will call the Dymo 4XL the Dymo 4XL. The Dymo 4XL and the 400 series printer all can print on Mac and all of them can print on PC. They're all going to be USB only, no wireless capabilities, no mobile printing, no Bluetooth, no wireless, all USB applications through a Mac or through a PC. I run OS Mojave on my MacBook and that works perfectly fine for 400 series printers. I've heard that if you're on Catalina, the 400 and the 400 Turbo have problems with Catalina, but there is a workaround that I will put in the description if you want to try that. And I've been testing them on Windows 10, but I also think that they work fine with Windows 7 or Windows 8. Compatibility across the board is pretty much the same. The next thing we're going to talk about is quality. And when you're talking about thermal printers, they measure in what's called DPI, which is dots per inch. It has to do with resolution quality. All of these printers print in the exact same DPI. They all print in 300 DPI, which is a higher quality print than some of the competitors, but it's only really needed for certain applications, postage not really being one of them. 300 DPI really shines as when you're trying to print logos, complicated small text and complicated images. So if you're just printing postage, 300 DPI really doesn't matter. The minimum DPI for postage is 203 DPI, which includes some of the competitors. 203 DPI is where you're going to see the zebras and where you're going to see some of the Chinese thermal printer competitors. So now I wanna talk about speed. Dymo has this tendency to really advertise via speed. For some reason, they made a printer that's the same as another printer. They made a 400, they made a 400 turbo. They made a 450, they made a 450 turbo. The only difference between the turbo and the non-turbo is the claimed print speed but the way that they measure the print speed is kind of skewed for a lot of applications anyways and probably won't matter in the grand scheme of anyone's normal life. How they're measuring their labels per minute is a very, very simple format, a four line text address label. 
no barcodes, no complicated logos or anything, which is going to print very fast on pretty much any printer anyways, because it's a simple file. The 400 versus the 400 turbo is a difference of 10 labels per minute. The 450 is actually slower than the 400 turbo and the 450 turbo is supposed to be faster than the 450 by 20 labels per minute. But then again, it's these really small, simple address labels, not complicated barcode shipping labels, which if you did a test would probably bring them a lot closer together if you're printing like 60 labels at a time. A lot of people probably aren't doing anyways. I would just ignore their claimed print speeds when you're trying to choose a printer. I've never seen an application where 40 or 50 labels per minute or 50 to 70 labels per minute, address labels per minute, would make or break anyone's business. And the Dymo 4XL, although it is a bigger printer, although it is a more expensive printer, it actually prints those technical specifications of speed. It prints at 53 address labels per minute, which puts it slower technically than the 450 Turbo. But again, speeds are not something you should be looking at. I kind of just wanted to talk about it so you can understand how asinine it actually is. Now that we've talked about some of the similarities, I'd like to show you the printers side by side. It'd be a disservice to not show you the actual products. As you can see, the 400 series over here is a little bigger than half the size as the 4XL. The designs of the printer are nearly identical. They both use the spool system. Both of them use the Dymo proprietary punch label design, which makes you only able to use Dymo compatible labels. Both of the printers have the same physical features, such as a front feed button. You turn it over, you see power in, USB. No, these will not work with iPhones and Androids. They will only work with Mac and PC, and no, they will not work with Chromebook. If you buy them new, they will come with a two-year warranty from Dymo. Both of them will also not be covered under warranty if you use third-party or non-Dymo labels because they want you to buy their labels that are overpriced for their machine because that's more revenue stream for them. Physically, very similar other than the footprint that it's gonna take up on your desk of the printer very similar. Now we're going to talk about the differences of these printers and it would lead you more to what you could use for your own personal business or the application you're going to be using it for. The biggest difference between these two printers is the print width. If you get anything out of this video, it is the print width. The width of the print will allow you or not allow you to print certain labels which will work for certain applications. The maximum width on the Dymo is a little over four inches, which makes it able to print the four by six standard shipping label size, which is what we use standardized in the US as four by six shipping labels. The Dymo 400 series maximum width is about 2.3 something inches, which doesn't allow you to use that four inch width because it wouldn't fit, it would stick out to there. But you can still print some postage with this label maker. Both of these will be able to print Amazon FBA SKUs. They'll be able to print addresses, name tags for an event. USPS provides this two by seven shipping format. eBay and pirate ship and any integration that goes with pirate ship will allow you to print two by seven postage with any Dymo 400 series label printer. These type of postage will only work for USPS domestic packages. And what that means is post office, like the Eagle, the government agency, shipping inside of the country. You cannot export anything because the export label file will not be in this format. It's gonna be in a four by six. You can't print FedEx and you can't print UPS. You cannot print international orders. You cannot print APO military addresses, just domestic postage which is okay because these are a lot cheaper. Now, the four by six 
label will work with FedEx, will work with UPS, it will work with anything that's formatted in 4x6, international USPS shipping, APO addresses, none of that is a problem for 4x6. Before I get into final recommendations, I'm gonna tell you guys price points for the printers. The 4XL is the most expensive. It can be had for between $150 to $250 on Amazon. They go on sale sometimes. And you can buy them secondhand. Sometimes you can find it under 100 if you're lucky, but they're usually hovering around about $150 used on eBay. Now the Dymo Label Writer 400, which I have right in front of me right here, it's around $40 on eBay. You're only gonna find these secondhand because they're no longer produced. The 400 Turbo, also only secondhand, no longer produced. That's a 55-ish dollar printer used. But when you get into the newer 400 series, the 450 and the 450 Turbo, those can go between 50 and $90 new on Amazon, and you might be able to find them a little bit cheaper on eBay. For what you get, for this price point, it is definitely applicable, I think, and you can't really be mad for a 40 or $50 printer that it has limited functionality. USPS domestic is 95-ish percent of your orders, and you have a backup printer at home where you can just print normal inkjet or laser for your UPS or your FedEx labels or your international. I would definitely consider getting one of the Dymo 400 series, wouldn't really matter which one. But when it comes to the Dymo 4XL, if you've seen my roasting video, the price point really isn't there because of a lot of the competitors that are out there in the 4x6 printing realm. I cannot really recommend this printer. New, if you find it used for cheap, go ahead and eat your heart out, get it, use it. But buying it new, I do not think the value is there. Uh, there's just better value printers. I will put a link to a lot of the alternatives to this printer in the description. And there's even alternatives for this one. For 40 or $50 for one of these, you're, it's really hard to complain if there's like subtle differences with other printers. You can get other printers that are cheaper than this that have better compatibilities, cheaper labels, and still do not think that this is a good product. And I'll put a link to that video if you wanna check it out. And I know this was a long video and I do appreciate everyone for watching. There was a lot of information to go over, but if you have any questions about the 4XL or the 400 series printers, make sure to put them in the comment section below. And if you haven't already, please give the video a thumbs up and I will talk to you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.